Oh. Watch it, small town. So, sorry, Miss Kane. See, you've got an interest in super person. Yeah, right, small town. He makes for good headlines. Not that you'd know about that. Why is it that when the news breaks, you're never around? Where were you yesterday when Superperson saved that group of people from the exploding soup? I, uh, had diarrhea. Too much information, Mark? I, I mean, uh, don't mind. I'm gonna go this way now. Someone help me! I gotta go. Welcome back, lovely people of Brisbane, to another Saturday at Showreel. We've got an exciting show planned for you today. First up, we're talking to the king of green screens and pro wrestler, Mr. Flash. Then we'll, talk, we'll be talking about the many physical transformations that actors have been through to commit to their characters, from extreme weight loss or gain to synthetic body parts. And finally, we have a treat for you from our team here at Showreel, a special segment on the basics of how to green screen. We'll show you what's what and what's not in the virtual world of green. Thank you for joining us today, Flash. Oh, thank you for having me. This is, this is lovely. Is it? I love the set. It's awesome. It's yeah. Nice. Well, you know, you've had a very interesting career. Yeah, so far. Yeah. So Pretty far. Good. Yeah, I um, I know you through The Late Night Show. Yes, that's true. But I also found out that you're a professional wrestler. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> I'm the biggest one in the world. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not really, that's a lie. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I professional wrestled for about mm, six years. Six years. Yeah. Um, How did you get into that? Um, I think I've always just enjoyed it. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I just yeah. liked the idea of um, grown men beating each other up. No, not really. <laughs> I liked the idea of um, having two really out there sort of characters telling a story, and it just so happened to be in a squared sort of a, the squared circle, as they call it. Um, but how I got started was um, a friend of mine um, in high school. We'd always just talk about it, like joke and how funny it would be, you know, if we ever got into it. Um, and ironically, he did on the Gold yeah. Coast. And I went and watched him one show, um, and I really, really liked, you know, the whole setup. And I thought, oh, cool, if my friends did it, you know, this is a, a step in the right direction. So I uh, approached the owner. Um, I had one training session, and six years later, um, here I am, still going. So mm -hmm. it was really awesome. So you mentioned that um, these wrestlers have a story to tell. They're yeah. almost like, well, they're actors, basically. Yeah. They perform. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of, you know, things do you have to always um, keep in mind when you go on that stage? Um, in terms of acting or in terms of... Acting or like, you know, just basically exciting the... I assume that you'd have to do a lot of performance acts to get the crowd hyped up and yeah. excited. Yeah. Is um, it? Well, I mean, the, there's certain aspects to professional wrestling. It's not... I mean, it, it depends on how you look at it. America sort of, you know, they have a... Sometimes they have a script and they, you know, they rehearse. Oh, really? Move do for move. Um, we learn how to do the moves yeah. and how to anticipate moves on you but in terms of rehearsing and performing and pre-rehearsing you know a show mm -hmm. no we yeah. never we never go out there into the ring before the crowd gets there and goes let's all do this and yeah. then come out to the show and go oh we haven't done this before there's, there's none of that um, yeah. that I've experienced myself um, but in terms of pro wrestling in terms of acting um, you've always got to sort of realize that there's a there's a deep level of psychology to what you're doing sure. in wrestling. It's not just a case of I'm going to beat this guy up and, you know, let's go home. Um, you sort of got to have the it factor, like mm -hmm. it's got to be a lot of charisma and a lot of yeah. personality. And you've got to appeal to the crowds and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Um, but I mean, certain guys, you know, they'll go into the ring um, having just started and it'll, it'll be really fresh for them and they won't know and they won't anticipate, you know, yeah. the crowd as such and sort of be just, oh, I'm in the ring, yay, this is fun. And yeah. the crowd just sort of sit there. But again, that comes with time. Um, and I guess with all acting, you know, you get better over time and yeah. you learn different things. So it's just a case of, you know, try it and keep going. Yeah. And yeah. so do you have, like, um, stories set out for you by, by your team that you have to fulfill throughout um, time? Sometimes. Sometimes they'll, in terms of storylines, they might write one. <sighs> 
and it might be, you know, it depends on the length. If, yeah. if, if they really like, you know, the character that you are and the way that you react with the crowd, they'll write one for a year and they'll go, this is the program, you're working oh. with this guy for this yeah. amount of time and the payoff is this, and you go, oh, cool. Yeah. So it's sort of a bit of a guideline that helps you get motivated in terms of training. Do you have um, a go-to persona? What's that? A go-to persona that you like? Oh, the character? That you love, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, the, the, the character that I do is um, called The Flash Man. Um, yeah. And he t I took a lot of inspiration from that from the DC comic of The Flash. Yeah. So my guy's like the ultimate superhero, yeah. being That's four cool. foot eight. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> It's he, just sort of like an ultimate underdog mentality. Like you know, yeah. I'll, just, you know I'll get into the ring, yeah. and the crowd will be like, "This guy's gonna get killed." Yeah. And I'll run rings around a guy who's you know six two, and, and yeah. end up beating him. And they'll go, "Yes, that was great." You know. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, but then I'll be myself clapping. No one actually clapped for me. I'll just sit there and go, "That was great," yeah. and I'll just leave um, and never be seen again. Um, yeah. But no, it's it's that's the persona that I do. Awesome. Um, I, I have. Sometimes you'll be lucky and you'll get to do two characters, depending yeah. on the size of the roster and what's available. Okay. Um, so I've, I've had the chance to do two characters yeah. in my career. Um, one was The Flash and one was another one who was just a complete, <laughs> utter, just mental case. Um, right. But it was more for the kids, you know, just a sort of grumbly gremlin kind of guy. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, that's cool. Cool. And then now you're on Late Night Show. Yes. Um, how did you get into that? Just quickly, like, give us a rundown of how you ended up on. Yes. Um, um this channel. Well, ironically, like, it actually comes from the wrestling. Uh, Scott, yeah. The 31 used to film uh, the wrestling show that I was on. Yeah. And Scott was a commentator. Um, and when I first started, um, before I started actually, they had a when I went saw my friend wrestle, they had a show, and um, there was a segment that they required a dance off, and they had these two sort of <laughs> mental case characters come out, and <laughs> get old kids in the ring and have a dance off, and yeah. they needed one more kid, and uh, some some little kid was going to do it, and his dad was like, no. Um, <laughs> And I thought, well, if there ever was a case to get into wrestling without getting into wrestling, yeah. this would be it. You know, I've always wanted to be in the ring. Here we go. And I thought it was going to be one of those Hollywood moments where you stand on the chair, the little spotlight comes on and goes, you, and you're like, oh, and you're sent to the ring with chariots of fire playing, and you, you trip over and fall and smash your face. Um, but that wasn't the case at all. I, I got on my chair, and I had, I remember I had a can of drink, and I smashed it and threw it on the ground. Oh, this is it. Had my hand up, and they didn't see me, and I went, oh. Just had to awkwardly stand <laughs> in my chair and they're just like, oh, you, and got in the ring. And so I did a dance and Scott was commentating um, and he, he, he stood up it? and he goes, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. He oh, put down the microphone oh, and clapped. That's awesome. That's so, the beginning of the friendship, hey? Yeah. So ever since then, I, I just talked to him pretty much every show and learned from him. Yeah. And he ended up doing Light Night Show and before I knew it, he wanted me to co-host with him. So. That's really So awesome. it is on a virtual set as well. And what kind of, what's the difference between acting on like a set like this and mm. then a set on a green screen? Um, all with the set, um, there'll be times where the set will be obviously set up to do and interact with, you know, the script will say, oh, we need to use this prop or you yeah. need to walk out this side and, yeah. you know, you need to use these, you need, you need to use your environment to act with. Um, with a green screen, it's, it's, it's literally a case of, sometimes it's a case of like, if there's, you know, a, 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 an attack or a mutant background going on, you've sort of got a, you know, a lot of improv. Yeah. Um, but it depends really on the environment and what they've written for the green screen sure. in order for you to sort of use it to your advantage. Um, That's cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So yeah, the green, green screen for me, it's usually a lot of more improv, whereas yeah. a set, it's sort of, you know, this is what you're doing and these Excellent. are the, what you're using. Well, thank you for joining us today. No worries. That's all we have time for. We'll be back after the short break. <laughs> Welcome back to Showreel. Well, we've all heard of method acting and seen actors do anything for a role, including dramatic physical transformations. From ridiculous weight loss to dramatic bulking up or wearing layers of latex, fake noses and wigs, actors can go through a lot for their careers. But is it just looking the part that wins them the Oscars or is it their pure acting genius? So guys, what are some of your favorite acting transformations? I'll let me. Yep, I'll let you go first. Well, um, the first one that comes to mind is Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder. Right. <laughs> if you've seen that film, mm. he's. I think like that's the only movie like actually like him in because he doesn't <laughs> yeah. look anything like himself. Yeah. Um, and he's like bald and fat, and he's like this like I think just the 
am I allowed to say douchey? He's just a douchey, <laughs> like, white guy. Mm. And and he, I think it's at the end of the movie, he, like, does this weird stance, and it actually makes the movie, I reckon. Yeah. Mm. And I think it works out well because it's a comedy. Mm. Like, physical transformations, I think. Um, he doesn't do many comedies either. And he doesn't, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's, like, that kind of gap is entertaining, and I really like it. Um, in terms of drama, I like um, Charlize Theron in Monster. Yeah, she won, awesome. like, yeah. an Oscar yeah. for that, and she was, like, this ugly person who's, you know, always nice to see someone so beautiful turn to something so ugly. Yeah. I love um, that. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a really nice person. Um, what about you, Flash? Um, I think in most recent times, just the difference between the two movies that Hugh Jackman has recently done, from Les Miserables, where he had to lose like a ton yeah, of weight to play, yes. you know, a, a slave. Jean. Yeah. To then jumping and filming The Wolverine, and he had to put all that weight again mm -hmm. and all the muscle in like the space of like four to six months. I think that in itself, in terms of like body mass, yeah. is like the, the, be the biggest transformation. And it must be so hard too. And like, I suppose we ask, is it worth it? Like do strict diets and then the gym every day. You know, do you think it's really necessary? And is it worth it? I think um, from the actor's perspective, I think, you know, inhabiting that role through a physical transformation, if that helps the character, uh, the actor get into the right mindset, it's a very cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's also, in terms of the audience perspective, it's just fun to see sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Like when someone, for example, Rooney Mara, like she's usually just this innocent looking, um, this actress, yeah. this really beautiful, turn into something so kind of, not goth, but just really punky. threatening and yeah. punky mm. in um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the American version. Mm. It's, it's really interesting to see that kind of change. and. Though sometimes that transformation, I reckon, gets in the way of acting. Do you, what do you reckon? Uh, look, no, I don't really agree. I think yeah. that when you go through such a physical change as a person, it changes you spiritually, mm. like and emotionally as well. Like it's really, it really helps to get into that persona as yeah. an actor. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 in terms of why they do it, yeah. you, you think they wouldn't be doing that role if they didn't enjoy it. Exactly. And I think yeah. I think the, the script that they've accepted to do, it just comes with the territory that look, you're going to be required to be like this. And they, yeah. I think it's a personal thing in themselves to do that. Because um, if they if they weren't happy at the end of the day, if they weren't happy to do it, they wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. So, you know, it's literally just a, a personal choice as well. Exactly. Um, so. Biopics as well, mm. like being someone, that those are pretty like, you know, it requires a lot of physical transformation, obviously, Daniel Day-Lewis and Lincoln, yeah. like, he didn't look at all like Daniel Day-Lewis, yeah. he looked like Lincoln. Yeah, right. Um, and Michelle Williams in, in My Week with Marilyn, yeah, she did a great job of that. She had butt implants and everything. Really? So, yeah, it was great. And, like, breast implants? I'm yeah. not sure about that one, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You need um, to check up on that. I think the movie coming out about Alfred Hitchcock. Um, yes! Just the prosthetics so that they excited. used. Yeah. It was just ridiculous. You yeah, know, they, it was cool. Um, for me to see a photo of Hitchcock um, and the actor just side, side by, by side. Yeah, yeah, it was just ridiculous. It was like, I don't know which one is which. Yeah. And like, and the only way you could tell, quite honestly, was that the, the photo of the actual Hitchcock was black and white. Like that yeah. was, to me, that was the only sort of dramatic difference. It's was the movie style. magic thing. It it's, it's definitely helps, you know, really get in and see the movie. Yeah. If, especially if it's a biopic. Mm. And do you think that these like transformations can only be pulled off by the really brilliant actors or can anyone just do it? Um, I think there comes a certain level to the transformation. Like if it's hair or you know, yeah. makeup, it's not really a sort of a transformation. It's just mm. sort of changing the look to suit the character. But I mean, you talk about acting and transformations mm. in, in comedies. Look at Goldmember and Mike Myers. Yeah. Sure, he's not, you know, the, you know, he's not going to win like, Oscars or anything yeah. like that. But in terms of comedy and the amount of transformations he did, the guy played four characters in one single movie yeah. and spent six hours trying to get into like one character's suit yeah. to then go and shoot for how many hours? Yeah. yeah. To then go home and do it again the next day. It's yeah. just like. You know. Well, you just mentioned, you know, sitting through makeup and and hair. That's a bit different from, for example, losing weight for like how Christian Bale lost weight for The Machinist. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's the thing, because like in, it's uh, I think it's last year's MTV Movie Awards. Like Elizabeth Banks won um, best on-screen transformation for The Hunger Games, and all she did really was sit through makeup yeah, right. and put on a ton of makeup and did like a lot of hair and her wardrobe was crazy and yeah. and I don't know if that if 
that transformation really equates to one's acting abilities. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's yes. the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I reckon, like some people go through a lot of training. Like Hugh Jackman obviously yeah. puts a lot of work to it, but sometimes actresses just sit in a ma makeup trailer, wait for all it yeah. to be done, and then is get it, all the everyone else's credit. Yeah, yeah. Is it really like them, or is it just the makeup? Or and some. Sorry, you go. Um, I mean. Sure, it, it could probably boost the performance. Like as you were saying, yeah. it, it helps to get into character. Yeah. Um, but in terms of best transformation, I mean... Yeah. Because like, the nominees were Michelle Williams, Rooney Mara, and yeah. I was just like, really? Like all she did yeah. was sit through And that. sometimes when you have such elaborate costumes as well, it can hide mannerisms that actors already have and then when you don't see them, you're like, oh, that was so good because, you know, they're a completely different other person. Mm -hmm. But just because of all the latex on top of it that you don't see yeah. this weird eyebrow twitch that they have all yeah. the time, you know? So yeah. it creates this illusion of it. Yeah, it's I mean, craft. but in, in terms of, um, you know, mannerisms and things like that, mm -hmm. just in terms of transformations, I mean, Johnny Depp is a perfect example from how he was in Alice in Wonderland yeah. to how he is in Jack Sparrow yeah. in um, Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, he's, he's sort of got that sway, walk and savvy and, you know, yeah, doing yeah. the hands, you know, flicking and stuff like that. And in Alice in Wonderland, there's just none of that at all. Yeah. It's just sort of, you know, brilliant. holding his hat and ooh, yeah. ooh, kooky. And... He can pull it off. Like, yeah. he's one of those actors. Yeah. It's this thing to, like, you know, do, it's just become different characters through, you know, for different movies. And it's, yeah. it's a really enjoyable as an audience mm. to go into a movie and be like, oh, I wonder what Johnny Depp's going to be like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, in terms of performance, I guess that kind of comes under acting range. I mean, yes. mm -hmm. Liam Nielsen, um, you know, he played a biopic where he did Schindler's List. Yeah. And then you turn around and he's in Taken as a, as a dad. And then you turn around again and he's, you know, Rachel Ghoul in, in the Dark Knight yeah. trilogy. And it's just like, again, that's just, it's the same guy, you know, he's, I've got a beard and now I'm, now I'm, you know, Schindler. Now I'm... Yeah. Rachel Gould. That challenges actors as well, not doing much like, yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Anyway, um, so some of these transformations are really, really cool, and we will definitely have to keep the eye on them on upcoming films. Um, after the break, we'll be talking about green screens, so stay tuned for more Showreel. <laughs> Welcome back. Many films and TV shows today use special effects and virtual sets. A well-known technique is the use of keying, also known as green screening, where the subject stands in front of a green coloured screen, allowing them to be inserted into any desired setting. Green screening is used on many of 31 digital shows, including the late night show. So what are some films that use green screening well, guys? Oh, uh, late night show. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I'm not sure. Oh. Probably, I think in recent times, maybe um, Star Trek, the new ones, or oh, both of them really. Yeah. Um, they use a lot of green screens with their sets, you know, being in the yeah. ship and whatnot, just the outside and, the, you know, space and all that. Being that it's all sci fi. You know, yeah, exactly. Sci fi action, those use a mm. lot of green screen, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, Harry Potter? Yes. Fantasy? For sure. Harry uses, Potter, for sure. I know that the invisibility cloak thing. Mm. Yeah. Invisible cloak. It's done really well. Yeah. Yeah. That has green screen. Yep. Avengers. Yeah. Used green screen yeah, with yeah. CG, CGI. I mean, did all the technical stuff. I mean, even even sort of local movies that were filmed here. Um, yeah. The Matrix used a lot of green screen for what they were doing. Yeah. Um, oh. At the time, you know, it was sort of revolutionary camera work with the bullet yeah. time. Um, but in terms of what they were shooting, you know, there yeah. were scenes where they'd have to use green screen. Um, yeah. So it's just a matter of, you know, trick photography, really. But yeah, The Matrix is one of them. Yeah, exactly. Do you think um, the green screen um, allows films to be realistic or no? or Because, um, like, some directors I know, like um, the recent film Drive, mm. which is, like, one of my favorite movies. Um, Nicholas, what's his name? Nicholas Winding. <laughs> Your favorite movie. Yeah. yeah. I love Obviously. this movie, that guy with the face. Yeah, Ryan Gosling. Yes. Um, he, I know that he, the director, wanted not to use green screen at all because he wanted a grounded feel and he prefers working at locations for the sake of actors yeah. getting the feel and you know just being able to touch the set yeah. it's kind of, it definitely affects the acting and, and what comes out on on film mm. and i reckon he didn't want to use any green screen and so that was pretty cool but you know sometimes i guess it depends on what you're looking for yeah. Yeah. if you're looking for like a drama kind of thing or a 
I mean, it's so, like I guess it really depends on the genre of the film. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're not going to do a, you know, like you said, a, a gritty drama and then have exactly. half of it look unrealistic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it literally depends, you know, on the genre. I mean, sci-fi, it's kind it of a given. Is, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe some horror. Yeah. It, you know, it depends on what scene they're shooting or yeah. if there's a yeah. guy that's, you know, going to be CG'd or green screened in later. Yes. But yeah, I mean, it, it literally comes back to the genre. Um, also depends on the budgeting, I guess. Yeah. I mean, um, and. You know what? It, some means even some stunts. You know, some stunt locations so, yeah. might be green screen to have explosions. Yeah. And in those like sci-fi and horror, you don't have to worry about whether it's realistic enough. Yeah. You know, you're kind of creating as you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the whole genre, really. It's sort of yeah. make believe. You know, mm -hmm. different scenarios. So, yeah. Um, literally you know comes down to whatever genre it can be. Yeah, um, I know that Christopher Nolan prefers like realistic stuff. So mm. even the Dark Knight trilogy and mm -hmm. Inception, he tried to use like real oh, life really? sets Inception and stunts well. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, which wow. is pretty cool. Like yeah. you think that it's CGI, yeah. but it's not because like he wants it. I mean, I'm sure there's some CGI and stuff, but he wants it to be real as possible. So all the water scenes like he literally had wow. in Inception, he literally had like cannons and stuff like wow, that, which cool. allows um, the director to be as creative as possible. Yeah. Anyway, so we'll leave you that um, with now we have a how-to on the green screening, and we hope you can find these tips as useful as possible. Um, make sure to use these green screen tips and post them up on Facebook. Um, and when you're done, we'll check them out, and we love to see what you've created. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, and thank you so much, Flash, for coming and joining thank us. Thank you. It's fun to be here. Thanks. <laughs> no worries. Awesome. We'll see you next week, and we'll be looking at the West End Film Festival. So until then, see you next Saturday at 2.30, and don't forget to find us on Facebook or YouTube. This informative guide is brought to you by the 31 Digital Furniture Appeal, because all our desks are fake. My name is George, and as you can see, special effects have made me look younger. Special effects are vital to modern movies. Without special effects, your movie just won't look awesome. Look at the moons. No, over there. Cut. <laughs> Special effects can be great visually, but it's no fun for actors when we have nothing to work with. This is the problem with the green screen. It's like trying to eat soup without a spoon. Remember, don't shout look at the moons. Give us a spoon. Green screen or blue screen, depending on the color, allows you to remove the color and replace it with anything. This is called chroma keying. but don't wear the same color as the screen. The quality of chroma keying depends on the lighting and the quality of the cameras, as well as the manual settings for the keying itself. Get the settings wrong, and it causes all kinds of hell. Overusing special effects can result in a film that is tacky and relies entirely on its visuals rather than the characters or plot. However, it does have its place. As I showed you before, green screen allows you to put the actors in all kinds of places that are impossible or too expensive to film in real life. It also allows you display visuals in background, a trick often used in television. Of course, when you're using live chroma keying, it's imperative that you use the correct background or things can get a little embarrassing. And now it's over to Connor with the weather. How's the weather, Connor? Great, thanks, Connor. It's going to be mostly fine today with high humidity and temperatures in the high 30s. And it's going to get quite wet down south this evening with a light drizzle, but it should dry up by the morning. Back to you, Connor. When you have multiple camera angles, make sure you have different virtual backgrounds behind them or it can look a little silly. So what are your views on special effects? Awesome. Really? Absolutely. Hmm, yes. Yeah. Indeed.
Most importantly, remember that the person in front of the green screen may not be able to see the virtual background while filming. While this can lead to embarrassing accidents such as our poor weather girls, when done deliberately, it allows you to make hilarious jokes without the person knowing. Have you ever thought about starting a new film franchise? No. I think I can retire now, knowing the franchise I've created will last for generations. And are you sure you're not just trying to milk it for all it's worth? No. <laughs> but last but not least, remember, without special effects like these in my movies, using green screen can limit your shot selection. You need to make sure the backgrounds match your camera angles. Well, thanks for joining us in the studio today, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, no, I'm supposed to be George... Well, that's all we have time for, I'm afraid. Tune in next time for... And remember, as we say in the industry, don't be a George. I've been Obi-Wan Kenobi. May the fast be with you.